Well, hello there. Good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are. It appears that I may need to adjust my dog cam. It seems that you can see, like, two-thirds of my dog, but you're missing the best part. Oh, hang on. Much better. Okay, all right, Mount Runs, Wednesday, or Thursday, yeah, Thursday, because we didn't stream Tuesday because of maintenance. We're like 413 attempts deep on this thing, and I've been told that today's the day, and I'm willing to believe, I'm ready for anything. If nothing else, today is going to have attempt number 420, because uh, we got, we're seven away from that, we usually do nine in a day, and I got the else to do it. <sighs> so I'm just gonna try and talk and run, talk and run. Mel Redcap, thank you very much for the 13-month reset. Good morning from Australia, Hazel and Chat. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Celtic Viking with a six-month reset. Happy six months. Uh, thank you for making me a better player through your guides and tips. Hope you, Mr. Nutty Joker, and Kira have a wonderful Christmas season. Thank you very, very much, guys. Can we manifest that Hazel will get midnight in the 420th attempt? This is a very popular prediction. I can't fathom why. <laughs> I... I will just, I will take midnight whenever midnight is ready to come to me. But like sooner would be greater than later. <laughs> sooner would be much better. Kilo Bravo Victor, thank you for the brand new sub. Welcome to the Squirrel Squad. Oh, goodness. <laughs> smooch is snoot. Joker doesn't, doesn't particularly enjoy smooch, snooch, smooch, snooch, snooch, smooch, snoot smooches. <laughs> having a moment. Um, but he will smooch your snoot. Um, if you put your face close enough to his, he will lick your nose and then look embarrassed about it. I think it's like that. That's kind of his attempt to make you go away is like if you put your hand near his face or like your face near his face or you offer him something that he doesn't especially want. Uh, he to to be polite, he will lick it just to express that he knows that you've done this thing. And then he hopes that it's over now and that you'll leave. Um, so you can trick him into into giving you kisses by just putting your face near his face and then out of social awkwardness he'll 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 smooch your snoot awesome pet battle it was something i was that was more that was more exciting and drawn out than i expected i did not know i don't know if many people knew um it was a bit on the fly but i thought it was just one duel so i hadn't i hadn't really thought <laughs> i hadn't really thought together a progression of uh, a progression of teams to use but it went well it was really fun Knowing this awful steed, it'll drop before 420 just so you can't say it. I am, I, I can make peace with that tragedy. That's something that I could get on board with. Oh, I have tea, I have water, water's good. I am stealth, so you shouldn't see me. Mm. Are you following the mythic race? Not terribly closely, to be honest with you. Um, it's on in the periphery of my consciousness. I check back in whenever I think to. Um, just to kind of see how it's going. Last I heard, people were working on Sludge Fist, and it looked awful on Mythic. Um, that was the most recent update that I had. But I took a I took a long a long lunch break. Mid midnight is on fire. <laughs> Perfect for blazing it. How is raid going? We had a raid night last night. We are now nine of ten normal. Um, we got a couple new bosses down. It was funny. The last one that we killed was Stone Legions. So we just have Denathrius left. We killed Stone Legions with like six minutes left on our raid. Um, and we did like we didn't even we didn't even put on the video. We were just hush um, One of our raid leaders was like well, you know what? This is one of those fights That's got a lot of mechanics and they don't matter So we're just gonna call this one out real fast and loose on the fly and pull it and I bet we win and we did um, We managed to communicate the essence of the important mechanics just kind of like on the go and we uh, killed stone legion generals in one shot on normal So now we just have Denathrius left and you would not believe how ready I am I mean, I guess you can believe it. It's not that unbelievable. But I am the readiest. I am utmost readiness to make my legendary. I have my two little stat thingies. I have my base item. I have selected a rank three. Uh, their price came down, which is nice. I think I saved some gold <laughs> by waiting this long. But I just, I don't have the power yet. And the only one really worth crafting for me is Harmonious Apparatus from Sardanathrius. And I'm getting it today. We're gonna kill it today, and I'm going to hearth out of that raid, and I'm gonna go craft it, and they can summon me back, or I can just walk back. I don't particularly care, but I am going to have that for Heroic this week. 
Um, I have discovered, for some reason, I thought that healer parses weren't a thing. I thought that, um, I, I think I was mixing them up with sims. Like on SimCraft, I don't think it lets you sim healing because it's, you know, it's, it's complicated um, and uh, very situation dependent and hard to just kind of parse out in, in, into this is better than this because it's very situational. Um, so I think I had taken that piece of knowledge that you can't just like run a SimCraft sim, or at least I can't with default settings. Maybe there's somebody that can. Um, I've never been able to run a sim for healing and I just thought that that meant they didn't have parses. And then I discovered that they do have parses, and that mine are okay. They're like 60, you know, 70 on a good fight, 50 on a bad fight. They're fine. They're not, they could be better. We have this one w w w Mistweaver Monk, and I don't think I'll ever be as good as this Mistweaver Monk because they just uh, slap. But like 99% parses all day, every day. And I have in the past talked to players like this, I've talked to this player, I have another friend that does the same thing, just whips out gold parses on everything. And I've come to understand the kinds of things these, this caliber of player does to achieve this level of excellence. And I've accepted that it's not for me. They do insane things um, sometimes. I don't have any specific examples, but they put a lot of work into preparation uh, as well as practice in min-maxing. And usually when I'm listening to what they do, I hear a thing and I'm like, oh, that's too much for me. That's why I'm not that good. And then I accept my fate as a reasonable but not amazing player. And then I go about my day. But every time I see the parts, I'm just like, oh, but, 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 but what's wrong with me? Why can't I do it? <laughs> and I go back down this rabbit hole all over again. Hazel never doubted for a second you'd win that pet battle. I, I was doubting. I was doubting. You guys, I mean, I am not a pet PvP expert at all. Um, I I have, I did 250 battles for the Stunted Direhorn pet back in 2018. And then until this week, I hadn't looked at it again. <laughs> I mean, it was the same thing. Like, I got my achievement a couple years ago. And I know Asmund had a similar story, but I got my achievement a couple years ago, or at least the one that I was after. And then I put it down for two years. And then this week I was like, oh no, I need to know what people do. <laughs> so I, um... I, I actually, I have a video that I'm working on and it's gonna take me a bit cause I've got some parts for it, but I've got a video I'm working on that shows, um, I had a chat with Hiru because if you don't know, Hiruma Red X, he's another WoW creator. He does top 10 videos on, he does top 10 WoW videos on YouTube. I uh, also streams on YouTube. Uh, great dude. I've been friends with him for a long time. We kind of started on YouTube at the same time. And he is a pet PVP expert. He is, as far as I'm concerned, the pet PVP expert. He's the only one I know. Uh, and he's very good. So I had a chat with him, an updated chat, because I had one two years ago that I, I never got the video done for. So I had an updated chat with him that kind of talks through the current meta, as well as him explaining like um, current teams to me so that I, and, and easy ones to use was the other thing. And anything that involved turn counting was going to be a big no, because I don't know. Um, I managed to misplay with the teams that I had, so uh, that video should be helpful for anybody that wants to get started in pet PvP and just wants a couple of examples of teams that can win. If you're watching the duels today, you notice I made pretty I made pretty strong use of Anomalous. Not saying that my use of him was strong, but I used him a lot. And that's because not only is that a very cheap, 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 cheap pet, maybe the cheapest pet ever, um, because of how easy those are, how, how many of those were created in 8.3. But it's also a very strong pet against almost everything, unless they're specifically running anomalous counters. And you could honestly just take three of them because of how strong the AOE on that pet is. Uh, up to 400 attempts on Mimiron's head. Oh goodness, I hope that drops for you soon. Winter Veil vale Daily Quest Box appears to be only lootable for level 50. Oh goodness. Oh, hang on. One moment, please. Um, well, you can't. Oh, you can. Okay. I vanished. I uh, I realized too late that I was I was trying to do too many things, and this character is not set up to steamroll this fight. I actually have to try. <laughs> Other games you play against WoW, uh, Animal Crossing. Right now, I've picked. I've gotten back into Animal Crossing: New Horizons, and then I'll often play some Hearthstone Battlegrounds. But for the most part, it's a lot of WoW. Let's see. Seen the normal lockouts for Nathru this week? Kind of some kind of weird reset. No, we raid Wednesdays, Wednesday, Thursday. So I think that would have missed me. Uh, anyone know of good guilds? Beginner friendly? Same thing with Stone Leaf and Generals and Normal. Uh, yeah, viewer, viewer guild, viewer guild is very, is very, uh, beginner friendly. Very social, very casual. Uh, Cat Mystery, thank you for the four month three sub. Pet battle went good. Um, uh, it went all the way to five. We had a, we had a draw and then we had a, an, a, 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 a informal draw where we were, um, out healing each other forever. If you parse 50 plus, it's a win. Uh, flask food is a lot of prep work for me. 
my private guild, so not the not the viewer guild, but my private guild that I raid with is doing a thing this tier that um, surprised me, but I actually really agree with it. it. Where they, for the longest time, have provided um, cauldrons, like the guild has provided cauldrons, the guild has provided uh, food, feasts, um, enchants, gems, um, all kinds of stuff to our raiders to make sure that everybody, even people that just can only like raid log, are set up for success. And... To fund that, um, there was usually just a couple people that just worked really hard and got taken advantage of. Like people that just cared would do all the work and then people that were a little lazier or had less time um, would just show up and raid. And uh, and the, the burden of funding all these things would just kind of fall on whoever felt like doing it. And it was very group project and it worked. But um, this time around, instead of that, what we've done is we have any... BOEs that drop during the raid um, go to the guild bank and then are sold to fund those things. And that works out really well because those are, especially right now, they sell for a lot. And even though um, food and flasks and stuff are expensive, we're getting a decent amount of BOEs drop. And that was another thing that would, like, some people might get really lucky and get a bunch of BOEs and just be randomly rich. And then other people see nothing and then never get any benefit from it. So this is kind of a nice way to spread the <laughs> spread the wealth and make sure that uh, the guild doesn't go completely broke. Um, uh, like in the first patch, <sighs> the stalemate was great. I uh, I was I was surprised to see the the sunflower. I was joking about that the other day. It's like bringing a um, it's like bringing like a a, a tank into, into arena is exactly what it is. It's just gonna slow the fight down a lot. Uh, four hundred thirteen. Mm. Nope. Uh, it was fun though. I haven't um I haven't. I haven't done pet battle PvP or thought about it that much in like forever, and it was it was surprisingly exciting. Infinity Girl, thank you for the four month three sub four months already. Uh, <laughs> pet battle world champion. Uh, I wish I was better at things that people valued, <laughs> so that I could actually like. Um, I've always enjoyed watching esports and WoW esports in particular. Like I used to love 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 watching, and I suppose I still do. I I just need the, it to come back. Um, Arena World Cup. And every BlizzCon I ever went to, that was my spot as I would set up in the WoW Arena place. And I would just, uh, I, I would dream of being part of the crew because it always looked like they were having so much fun and they were so good. And, uh, and I, <laughs> I think that uh, winning a pet duel is as close as I'm going to get. But I mean, with that attitude, uh, I started laughing at their attempt to read the name of one of your pets. I, I should have um, renamed it. I wiped a couple of the nicknames that were just like, I don't know, nerdy. <laughs> I don't know why I think that's going to be a problem, but some of them that I had just invented, um, I wiped, but I forgot that one. Uh, you're telling me a WoW content creator plays WoW? Uh, nameplates are KUI nameplates. I don't think I messed with them very much. I might have changed the size or maybe the font. Uh, let's see. Cries an undergeared mistweaver monk. Working hard on my island. Almost done with my hiking camping forest. Oh, that sounds so cool. I'm a... Uh, Right now I'm focusing on my house and keeping my house like kind of cute but also fairly minimalist. But I think that for the rest of my island, I just don't want it to be cluttered with a bunch of stuff. And I really want kind of like a forest trail with a river, I think, and then maybe like a little pond. Um, but I don't want it to be too like done, you know? But also the other thing is I don't like having too many trees on my Animal Crossing island because I like shaking them all to get my five wasps and two pieces of furniture out of them without having to spend all day doing it. So I'm going to have to probably allocate all of my, you know, seven or 13 trees or whatever I decide um, to my camping forest and then the rest of my island's gonna be bare. So I'm gonna have to come up with something, I suppose, so that it doesn't just look silly. Will there be a VOD somewhere in the pet battle? Um, it was kind of long. I imagine that there will be an OTK VOD. I did record, um, I grabbed a record of the stream and I also recorded myself, um, just my gameplay plus a camera for me while it was going on. And then I have, um, I have the call I had with Hero as well. So I'm going to put it all together into a video, but I'm probably going to edit it quite heavily because not all of it was um, safe for, as safe for families as I would like my content to be. And also, I don't want to just like wholesale rip off the stream, so I'm going to I'm gonna do some editing and put something together um, that has the, the important bits <laughs> for Spad Battle Invitational. <laughs> I don't know if I'd be able to do anything different. I kind of used all the moves I had. Um, are your guild flexible regarding what role you take in raids? Some seem stricter than others. I think the important thing with my, with my private guild and the way they run it is uh, being very upfront 
with what you want to be like not switching all the time like if somebody was like i want to heal i want to tank i want to dps and they were doing that constantly throughout the tier that wouldn't fly because we just got you a bunch of tank gear and now you want to heal like you you want to have made your decision before the tier starts you want to communicate it early to the guild leaders because they're building spreadsheets and they're building rosters and like figuring out what we have and what we need because there's always a bunch of people that are like well i'll just do whatever's needed we have quite a few people that are very flexible but we need to tell them what to flex to so you have to just be very decisive early on with what you want to do and then it also depends on how often you can show up to raid because some people uh, like me have no life at all and show up to every raid unless we're actually very ill and then other people um, some of them have work early in the morning maybe they have to leave some of them have busy jobs that sometimes take them away some of them have families and <laughs> wives and kids that they will sometimes take attention and it doesn't mean they can't raid with us but it does mean they're not allowed to tank and they can't heal because you can't you can't be one of the two tanks and also be incredibly flaky. It just makes it really difficult to run the raids. So if you are going to have sporadic attendance, usually that's fine. You just have to be upfront about it and you have to be a DPS, um, generally speaking. <sighs> uh, it's going to be on 420, isn't it? Battle Pet Esports when You should talk to Hero about that if anybody was going to put that together. Um, let's see. Interested in dream addresses at all? Yeah, I want to set my stuff up more um, before I post mine, but it would be fun to walk around in other people's. I just learned about the dream system. Um, thanks for putting the pet battle video up. Uh, in advance, uh, hopefully, hopefully I get that done without it taking too much time. It's uh, mo <laughs> most of, I complain a lot about editing, but most of the videos I edit are just very straightforward. It's like, here's the voice, here's the video. Here's some screenshots, bada bing, bada boom, and then you just throw it together. But um, not, it's not often I have multiple segments, but I do kind of like working on things that feel a little different than the normal stuff I put out. Johnny Soros, thank you for the 16 month reset. This is the day I can feel it. Oh gosh, I hope so. Mm. Sorry, I have some apple left over from lunch. I'm gonna boop. It's really sour. <laughs> it's really sour. It's not like a Granny Smith apple. I don't know why it's so sour. <laughs> There's, um, I don't remember if this is a real thing or if I just like fever dreamed it. But I remember people that were, um, singing like professionally, like music school, people that were doing vocals. They had a thing where they would eat a sour apple to help like get your mouth juices flowing for lack of a better word um so that to keep everything i don't know not dry and i'll work <laughs> goodness gracious miss miss Uk, thank you for the two month reset always happy to see your stream appreciate it what will you do after you get midnight i think i'm gonna need like a counselor um i think i need some advice <laughs> i think i'm gonna need to have a sit down conversation with somebody that can tell me what to do next oh goodness down the last boss in Castle N first time and first poll as a guild. We made everyone watch your vid. Congratulations on your kill. Our apples are the best. Uh, wouldn't water do the same thing? Yeah, um, you know, something. And I mean, I like I said, I don't even remember if that's a real thing or if I dreamed that. I would imagine it has something to do with the continuing production and not just something that you drank and, and then was gone. Uh, throat coat team works as well. Uh, I believe the word you're looking for is salivating. I suppose so. <laughs> yeah. You know. That would, that's, that's a little less um, obscene sounding than mouth juices, but maybe I should be alternating because I also have tea and I have a black tea that's quite strong because um, I wanted one. I always do this to myself. It's like afternoon, three o'clock or so is my black tea time, but also it's stream time and nothing, I mean, there are things, but uh, caffeine and black tea and coffee, like dark tea is one of the things that can really dry out your vocal cords if you're like drinking and talking. Um, if you're, if you're, you want like a water or like a clear tea or green tea, I find is okay. Herbal tea is great. Throat coat's great, but black tea will really dry you out. But you know, sometimes it's just what you want. Mm. Start farming the Shadowlands rare mount drops after midnight. Tens of rares, especially in Moldraxish. I thought about that. I thought about that, especially when I was looking at like my list of Shadowlands mounts that I don't have yet. Kanga Mangus, 92, thank you for the brand new sub. Welcome to the Squirrel Squad. My camera crooked. 
Maybe a little bit. Um, I thought about that. The problem is, and it's not a real problem, it's a crazy lady me problem. I like to pick a spot and park all 23 of my characters somewhere and just work on one mount for like two hours at a time. I like to just kind of use all of my energy and forces and resources to try to ring one specific mount out of the game at a time. And then when I get it, I move on. Um, and be I have 23 odd characters that are level 50, but I have one character that's level 60. So while that would work if I had all of these characters leveled, um, it, it just I would have to level them in order to get more than one chance a day. And this is not saying that I couldn't just like log on to my priest and then camp the various rares and get like one chance in a given mountain stream on like five different mounts. But I'm just allergic to that for reasons that don't make any sense. <sighs> College a few times I drank dark coffee before a vocal class totally dried me out. Thanks for your vid on the Legion mailbox. To I grads on getting it. I, um, I heard that my steward, my Minta, on my Kyrian steward on my main is going to be able to bring me mail. And I was like, oh, that's, that's a nice backup for people that don't have, don't have Katie. Katie. Katie is truly the original. Well, actually, no, the Argent Squire is the original assistant, but Katie does a good job. A lot of Shadowlands mounts locked behind Covenants. Yeah, I would, I would agree there are a lot that are locked behind Covenants, but there's also a lot that aren't because there's just like a lot in total. <laughs> there's a lot of mounts in general. Um, there's at least, I think, four or five more that are on my relatively easy to get list that are not Covenant locked. And then I think another handful that are just off of rares that are not Covenant locked necessarily, but just um, you just got to kill a rare once per day. Uh, nameplates are KUI nameplates. Yeah. How do you feel about sushi? I like sushi very much. I, um, I miss living closer to the coast because the fish was fresher, but you can still get good sushi in Portland. Um, for the most part, because I'm, I'm quite cheap about food and I'll eat out sometimes. It's like, it's not like I never order food, but I, I hate to do it because you look at the app and then you think about like the, the delivery fee and the tip and the prices are already marked up and then you're feeding two people and then... Like, it's just, it's like half a grocery order just for two people to eat dinner. And I just, I can't look at that and not do the math of like, well, what could I make here that I already have? Or like, what could I do with a tenth of this money with groceries? Even though it's not, like, we could, it just, it just feels silly, I suppose. So, um, instead, to satisfy my sushi cravings, I make sushi that's not as very fancy. Um, because cheap fish is not good. You don't want to buy, especially for raw consumption, you don't want to buy cheap raw fish to use in your sushi. Um, so instead, I do one that uses imitation crab, which um, comes already in stick form. It's not the fanciest thing ever, but it's perfectly edible, and it's very easy to slap into sushi. It's also very affordable. And then the other ones I do like a canned tuna thing, but with um, sriracha, and I have some special spicy chili things I do to make like a spicy tuna with canned tuna, and that's quite good as well. Um, it's not like I wouldn't serve it to uh, people coming for dinner, but I'll eat it for dinner myself. Uh, attempt number 414? Well, I got another hoof plate. Maybe 415. I have not got Blanche yet. No, I haven't started. Mm. I've started seeing more and more people get it, though. And the more of them I see around me, um, the more the more I start to feel like I really need to see that. Um, following Race to World first? Uh, not not super closely, but on on the periphery of my awareness. Um, I don't have it like up all the time, but I'll check in every time I get up and leave my office and see how they're doing. Okay, monk number one done. Time for monk number two. I am going for Midnight's Eternal Reigns from Ataman in Legion's Karazhan, Return to Karazhan. Supposedly a 1.4% drop chance. We're just remarkably unlucky over here. Stick crab's one of my favorite snacks. See, I haven't figured out, aside from having it in sushi, I have yet to establish... Another way that I like to eat stick imitation crab. Um, we have to do imitation crab. Uh, partner is allergic to actual shellfish, but imitation crab is made from usually like pollock, like a white fish, so it's fine. Um, and I'll put, like, the pack will come with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sticks typically. And I'll use six of them to make four rolls of sushi um, that my spouse and I share between the two of us. And then I have two sticks left, and most of the time I just don't use it, and then it goes bad, and then I throw it out, and then I'm sad. Because I just don't have any, like, I can't just eat it, I mean, I guess I could, but it doesn't appeal to me to just, like, grab a stick and start eating it. Um, 
No, one thing that I did do one time is I made like a like a crab vegetable dumpling. Like I think I used crabs and some the crab and then some noodles, and then like some cabbage. I think maybe like some carrots and green onions, and I steamed that in dumplings, and uh, those were good. But it was dumplings are delicious, but they're kind of a lot of work, and that's when I don't do the hard part, which is making the wrappers not hard, but just like really time consuming. Devers ninety seven, thank you for the six month resub. Stop it, Hazel. You know it'll be a temp 420. I'm almost dreading 420 because it's just going to break so many little hearts <laughs> if it doesn't drop. I mean, I, I want to believe that it's going to drop, but I've, if it gets to that point, then I will be a woman that has killed this boss 419 times and seen nothing. What makes me think that attempt 420 will be any different? I don't think Atomen cares about the meme. If he cared about the meme, he would have dropped it on 404. <laughs> Is it the seafood soup? Mmm. Soup. Mmm. Seafood salad, fake lobster roll. Yeah, I think I just don't have enough. Um, I don't. I don't usually eat. I mean, I guess I could make like a crab salad, but I don't know. I'm oddly picky with food sometimes. Uh, how is the bird feeder? Haven't talked about it in a while. It's good. I switched to a type of seed that's lower mess because the original one, the birds loved it, but there were some seed shells involved that were kind of making a bit of a mess. So I've switched to a lower mess, a more expensive but lower mess seed thing and the birds seem to like it but it's been pouring rain lately um so i have to maintain the feeder quite often i have to like go and dry it you don't want like wet seed and it drains when it's raining a little bit but it's been raining a lot lately um and you don't want the seed to start to mold that's no good so i've been it's been kind of a pain in the butt lately i wish i had a, an overhang or something like that to, for it to be underneath but no luck spooky snacks thank you for the 10 month race of happy sub anniversary wahoo um, I suppose I could look into like a squirrel baffle. Um, I know there are like there's things you can have above it that might help keep it dry. I should look into that. 16 imitation crab recipes. So it might sound stupid, but did you check dungeon difficulty every time you ran? I do. I'm pretty careful about it. And if I miss, uh, chat will yell at me. Um, we've tested this before. <laughs> you can, you guys can see what difficulty I'm on because of the little flag up here. If it's purple and has a skull on it, that means I'm on mythic. I have in the past once or twice done it in the wrong difficulty and people let me know right away. Least picky eater on the planet. I feel like I love just about everything in some way. That is a wonderful way to be. I'm not that picky when it comes to other people serving me things, but if I'm going to make something... I need my soul to want it already, and that's hard when I haven't tried it yet. It has to sound good to me. Once I've had something, like once I, you know, somebody has served me something, and with that, as long as I'll like dietarily eat it, I'll try whatever. Um, and usually I will enjoy it, and then I might want it later, but if I've never had it, and I don't know what it's like, and there's no, like, primal want <laughs> for this sort of food in my heart, then I can't bring myself to make it, I think is the thing. Hear about the Torgas nerves? Yeah! I am curious how that makes it feel, because I have I had not yet tried. This week, um, tomorrow on stream, the plan was to try to solo an 8, because I had managed to solo a 7, and I wanted to see if I could do the last one. And, uh... And the seven was a little tight. It was a little close. So it was kind of up in the air as to whether I could do the eight. When are the changes going into effect? The thing is, I'm... <laughs> Part of me has the incredibly irrational worry that I'm going to clear the eight and I'm not going to be happy because I cleared post-nerf Torghast. Who cares about post-nerf Torghast? I wanted to full clear solo pre-clear Torghast. That's not... I'm not saying this is the right take. Um, but that's what my whiny little heart is doing right now. I need time to get used to the idea and to figure out how much, how nerfed it is overall. Um, because I don't have time on stream today unless I like stop mat runs, but that's blasphemy. Um, to do, to do Torghast. I am very happy just about having them be faster. An hour and ten long clear is just too long and I really hope that it does get sped up. Uh, already in effect? Alright, well it's too late then. It's too late. I will never know. <laughs> I will never know if I could have cleared it. Um, I'm sure there will be challenges to pit ourselves against in the endless halls. I'm sure I will not be able to solo that all the way day one. Not a chance. So, um, so I'm, I imagine I will get that satisfaction back some way or another. 201 Mythic Tank was getting trucked in the eight upper reaches. Needed to be changed. Yeah, but like, in this particular patch, right? Like, there is gear. 
and I and we should be clear, the argument that I'm about to make has already been overruled. I know that I am wrong. Um, I, I know that this is not the way that everybody sees it, and Ian has now agreed, and they are changing it to fit the public sentiment, so I'm gonna preface this by saying I know I'm wrong. But, like, later in, later in this patch, there will be people that are going to be running around in, um, like, item level 220 gear, 226 gear. There's gonna be people that get it from PvP and from, from the Mythic Raid, and... I, my initial understanding was that the very highest levels of Torghast that just became available this week were meant to be challenging to people, not just today, but like later at like the very end of it. Because you've never needed to full clear Torghast to get your legendary. You can just do the bottom floors and over a couple weeks you can get enough Solash to get your stuff. Um, so I always thought that those, those hardest layers were for later on and that you would maybe need either the best stuff or just more time to get more soul binds and stuff and that we weren't supposed to full clear it right away. I know that not every I know that most people do not agree with that and I know that we're we're now tuning it so that so that it's easier so that people in today's gear and not in next month's gear can do it. But that was just kind of my understanding. Um uh, don't understand why it would ever be difficult. It's not supposed to be challenging. I would disagree. I think that the higher levels, if, if the higher levels weren't challenging, then why have levels? Why not just give you your stuff, right? Um, I, I don't want the game to be just filled with like Warfront type things that have no challenge, but you have to do them for like currency. So I liked that the higher levels of Torghast offered a challenge that you didn't have to do because you could grind out your Soul Ash in the lower levels or even in the medium levels if you wanted to, but that um, there was like a, something to work towards. Achievement-wise. Uh, Captain Daisy, thank you for the 15-month reset. Also, Mike T298, thank you for the 11-month reset. Hey, Hazel, hope you're having a great stream and have a great night. I'm also incredibly biased on the Torghast issue because I've never tried to solo it as a DPS. I have only ever soloed as a Holy Priest solo, which I think we've established is kind of OP. So uh, take, that, take that into account when you're listening to what I'm saying, is that I have never known pain. So if I sound unsympathetic, that's why. <laughs> it's, because, it's because I have no frame of reference. Uh, wanted to say I love your Shadowlands dungeon guides and YouTube. Helped me a lot understanding the fights. Cheers. Thanks for watching them. Nice if they gave you the Soul Ash at the end of the floor. If you fail the last boss, it's not a waste of an hour of time. Mm. Bigger Soul Ash for a full clear. There's something. Oh, I see. So yeah, like a, like more if you get through the whole thing, but something if you, if you still can't kill the boss. I did all the layers now, but I didn't get an achievement. I don't think there's an achievement. Um, I meant achievement in the, in the the language sense, not in the gameplay sense. Still be rough with the Mistweaver Monk too? Yeah, we'll see. We'll do, we'll, I'll, I'll try the new eight tomorrow um, and see how that feels. I, I may still <laughs> fall flat in my face and then embarrass myself greatly. That is a strong possibility. Okay, I need some combo points or energy or combo points. I don't know how, <laughs> I'm playing a Windwalker Monk, not a clue how it works. Um, Get the healers down. Uh, Owl Phoenix, thank you for the four month resub. Also, Brizzly with a brand new sub. Thank you very much. Welcome to the Squirrel Squad. 221 tries for the Fiery Warhorse. Congratulations. Did you get some edibles ready for attempt 420? What do you think? <laughs> oh, dear. Dearie me. I have, I have some apples. I have some really sour pieces of fruit. Will that count? <laughs> Having never, having never experienced weed, I wouldn't know the difference. Uh, uh, this mount does not fly. No, it's just a ground-bound horse. <laughs> Game sounds really quiet. I'm going to turn that up. If you don't blaze it, how can it possibly drop? <laughs> Sour apple's basically the same. <laughs> Sometimes it's fun to be incredibly sheltered. Sound. Do, 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 do. Oh, spooky. Mm. All right. So many balls. So many orbs. I don't know idea what that's all about. <laughs> I spawned a lot of orbs on my um, on my holy priest now as well. I have um, uh, boon of the ascended. Oh no, that's my part of me. That's my Kyrian thing. What am I thinking? Of? Boon of the archon. Um, I have boon of the <laughs> boon of the other a word. Well, one of the other a words. Boon of the boon of the archon is my healing trinket that I'm currently wearing, and that spawns orbs that I kept telling people to step on so they'd get healed until I realized they get healed for very little. This is attempt number 415. No, I thought maybe I could like get it with violence. 
the mount that WoW made his vote for is coming in the spring. Like, February. January, February. March? Q1? Some give combo points, some heal you. Okay. Uh, answer sounds like when you have to lie to your parents. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Next character. Attempt number 416. Coming in hot. Oh, we got Hunter's Time. I do adore my Night Elves. I am actually... That does make me... I am really excited to play this character because of just how much I love the Night Elf reworks. Although, like, the, the, the ha that hair... I feel like she's her head's a little busy. Like, she's wearing a helmet, and she has a little circlet underneath it, and she's got a scar, and she's got face tattoos, and she's got her bangs in her face. It's, like, a little much. I wonder, maybe I should take one of those down. Anyways, um, Night Elf Hunter. There's, there she is. Uh, January or February would be winter. In my brain, as soon as it's New Year, it's spring. <laughs> I know that's not how that works, but... Uh, in my brain, quarter one, two, three, four, ours are uh, spring, summer, fall, and winter. Not technically correct, but you know. <laughs> more attempts in the Zulgarev Raptor. Oh, this is more attempts than I think I have on anything ever, with the exception of the um, the Leaping Vein Seeker. But that was a world dross, a world world drop, not boss. World drop, man. I haven't gotten any world boss loot yet. I don't think. Um, I did the world boss this week, or in the Minimus. And, uh, and it was less scary. It was less awful than last week. It went better. I didn't, uh, did I die? I might have died. Maybe I only died once instead of multiple times, but I did not get loot once again. Uh, grind is real for the mount. Uh, did you win the pet battle in OTK? Uh, yeah, in turn, in the, the fifth round, I took one. I took it. With a, I popped in a mechanical pandar on Dragonling. I was sweating bullets. That last team, I improvised it because I'd already used the four teams that I had up, set up previously and some of them twice. And, uh, and I didn't have anything else, and I didn't know what he was going to pick, and I also didn't really, like, I needed to mix something up, so I, I, um, I just grabbed some stuff. <laughs> I figured I wanted to try and, try and wheel in the mechanical pandar and dragonling, and it worked out for me, it paid off. But pet battles are, pet battle PvP is, once you, once you understand it to a certain level, which it's arguable whether or not I do, but once you get to, like, a medium level, it's completely RNG as to what, like, do you beat your opponent in the rock, paper, scissors, and then do you beat them in RNG rolls? Because um, as Asmin was explaining on stream, if both of us are using a pet with identical speed, there's a 50-50 roll to see which one of us gets to go first. And that can determine the outcome of a match. Um, there's other moves that you use that might have a percent chance to miss. A few of the teams that I was using were laying down Darkness Weather, which gives both of us only a 90% hit chance, which gives you a 1 in 10 chance to miss. And I whiffed a big hit um, because of the darkness. I whiffed another one because it was just a low hit chance move, but... Um, there's a decent amount of RNG in them as well, so it's not as skill-based as... I mean, not that it looks terribly skill-based, but it's it's kind of like Hearthstone that way. And that good players will still do really well, but it's mostly just a matter of knowing what to use and then getting lucky. <sighs> what is Boy's Mount of Choice? What is Boy's Mount of Choice? We ran Boy last week. Um, I don't remember what mount he has keybound. Thank you and your content are awesome. Hope you're having a great day. Why, thank you. Congrats on the pet battle. Karazhan music's pretty good. Although, I've been hearing it a lot. <laughs> I've heard a lot of Karazhan music. You'd think I would hate it more by now. I'm pretty in the middle. I'm pretty ambivalent. Speaking of ambivalent, I am uh, really struggling with my Venari rep. Probably because I don't do the Maw very much. Um, the real move is to have friends. <laughs> in the past, whenever... Sometimes after, like, our raid night... A few people will stick around and they'll be like, oh, hey, is anybody going to the Maw? And then they'll put together some groups to go do Maw quests together. Because if you put together the group before you go in, um, or maybe if you're just like on the same server at Guildies or something, but you can, you are in the same shard, because it's difficult to just kind of group finder them. Phasing gets weird, but you can just go with a bunch of people if you prearrange it. And oh my goodness, that's so much better. Oh, goodness. Nails look festive? Why, thank you. They are starting to chip a little bit. And then, in a strange turn of events, I had the top coat, just the top coat, pop off of my one of them today. Uh, so I, I redid that. I fixed that while I was pet battling. But yeah, they're uh, they're they're hanging in there. I like these ones. Uh, not being able to mount in the moss is incredibly annoying. But imagine how wonderful it's gonna feel when you finally get one, though. The awkward introduction when you realized you watched your revenues was ten out of ten. That was very very flattering. Uh, take some nail advice from Nail Logical. I take everything from Nail Logical. I buy, I, like, I'm wearing her nail polish. I'm a, I, I, I stand. 
If you joined a mob pug, you gotta leave and re-enter to join their phase. Can you just leave and re-enter on your own? You don't need the whole group to do it? Because I thought, I the reason I hadn't been bothering was because I think I misunderstood and thought that you needed everybody to do it. But still, um, I'll, just, I'll just wait until I can <laughs> go after raids. Uh, how do we level as a healer? You have two choices, um, depending on which level ranges you're talking about, but you have three choices, actually. Well, you have more, but one, all healers do have some damage buttons. Um, as a holy priest, for example, you've got your holy fire, you've got your smite, you've got your chastise. Um, especially now in Shadowlands, they've taken a lot of abilities that used to be stuck to damage specs and shared them out. So you can do some damage as a healer. So you can quest like anybody else. It will be a little slower, but you'll be very survivable. You'll be able to heal yourself like nobody's business. So you could just do damage as a healer spec. Second option is you could do dungeons. Dungeons will give you experience, um, both 1 to 50 and 50 to 60. Um, it's not necessarily going to be as efficient as questing, but that way you can play as a healer. Third option is to engage in types of leveling that don't involve combat. So your pet battle dailies, your gathering, um, are two good examples of ways to get experience that don't involve just standard questing in dungeons. And that you can do in really any spec you want. Although if you're gathering, it's nice to have a damage set up so that you can kill things if they aggro you. And those are the main options that you have. Um, I, leveling healers, will usually have a DPS spec for them. The only time I'm really doing damage in my healer spec these days is for Torghast because it's kind of built for that. Tamalama, thank you very much for the brand new sub. Welcome to the Squirrel Squad. It was fun seeing you on the OTK stream earlier. Uh, quite new to PvP Arena. I met a rogue and a hunter. They made me unable to heal my teammate. The target was obscured. So it might have been Smoke Bomb. If you were right next to him, then you would also be in the bomb. Uh, smoke bomb obscures line of sight. So if you are in the bomb, you can only heal people in the bomb. If you're out of the bomb, you can't heal into the bomb and vice versa. If they bomb on you, you have to get out of it to get line of sight. It's like a line of sight breaker. And uh, it's possible that you were on the border of it um, so that he was technically, your partner was technically in it, but you weren't and that would break it. That's the only thing I can think of, but I haven't PVP'd yet this season. For all I know, they've just added new stuff that I have no idea about. Did you get to craft your legendary? No. Today, hopefully, fingers crossed, I have everything ready to go. I just need my power. We are 9 of 10 normal. We are 9 of 10 normal um, Castle Nathria, and we have a raid night tonight. So we're just going to go give, 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 give Mr. Den Den a punch in the noggin, and he's going to give me my thingy, and then I'm going to go craft my legendary. It's going to be great. I'm going to wear it, and I'm going to ascend to my true uh, full form. I'm going to evolve. Um, I'm going to grow up. I'm going to start giving tax advice, and I will be a real girl. <sighs> yeah, you could level in PvP. Um, I don't... I, it's... <laughs> have fun. Uh, that is that is a technically true statement that um, would take a long time, but possible. Her item level is 190-something. Um, there should be an armory link in the info. What do you think of the Mythic Keystone mount this season? I don't know that I've looked at it yet, Abdul. Um, what's it called? Or I guess I can find, I can look for it. Uh, let's see, mounts, 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 mounts. Uh, Keystone Master? Ooh! What? Oh, n hard need. I gotta have that. That's it! <laughs> that's, that's awesome! Why is it so big? Why is the back so big? You could have circus elephants leaping through it. You shouldn't, it's pokey, but like you could... Wow! Wow! That's amazing, I need that. Um, you sound like a female Pinocchio? What does Pinocchio sound like? I mean, I guess maybe Pinocchio sounds like a male me. Uh, how do I get to rant now? 13. I don't know if you can this week, can you? Uh, it's gonna be run 420. That's what the people have said. It's going to be really something else if the people are right. Uh, this particular run is going to be not quite 420 yet. We're getting there. Uh, let's. I'm going to go ahead and use some cooldowns and try to just take him out. Yeah, this will be attempt 416. Ataman, please. Drum roll. No. Endless pastrami, though. Thank you very much for the sub. Welcome to the Squirrel Squad. Mm. Uh, how do you get that mail? 
this oh the mount we were just showing that's keystone master shadowlands keystone master season one which as i understand it shadowlands keystone master it's actually why am i dumb why <laughs> why can't i fit like it's it's for doing a 15 of every dungeon in time right shadowlands dungeons unless i'm mistaken I'm certainly not doing 15s yet. Oh, is it a feat of strength? Oh, uh, okay. Is it for doing a 15 of every dungeon in time? Okay. As long as I'm right. <laughs> oh, man. Took a little longer than usual. Yeah, the loot, like, it popped up. Usually I don't actually see the loot window. Usually it just kind of shows up. Um, so I, that, for a moment, I thought might be the thing. Can I pet your dog? I can pet my dog for you. <laughs> Is the excitement still there when you loot or have you come to expect no midnight? I am fully conditioned to expect no midnight. I am starting to become unclear on what I'm doing. <laughs> this is just what I do now. For no particular purpose, to no particular end, just because. I don't play WoW, but my PF watches you. I felt I needed to get educated. Well, if you ever want to play WoW, you should. It's uh, there's WoW for everybody. You don't have you don't have you don't have to go too hard if you don't want to. I think that WoW has kind of a reputation of being this just like life eating game that's so addictive and encompassing that it just like destroys lives. And don't get me wrong, it can a hundred percent do that. But um, especially these days, WoW is very much what you make of it. You have it's it's like being introduced to a great banquet hall with many different things available for you to eat. And you could eat everything and die. It's not recommended. You just kind of pick whatever looks good. Best way of finding a guild. Um, try. <laughs> I know that sucks. But um, in my opinion, your best guild is just going to be the one that matches you in terms of culture and expectations. Like they they're want to do the same content that you do at the same level that you do. And they have a culture that you mesh with. So the best way to find that is to just join guilds and hope for the best. I don't think that you can really, I mean, you can look through guild recruitment posts. There's forums for it. You can look through the guild finder. Um, that's the Blizzard official in-game. Uh, if you go to J uh, and then you go, f uh, that's for communities, I guess, join or create. Uh, is there not a, is there a finder? Filter by, you can filter by language, dungeons, raids. Maybe I want to be a DPS. Um, you've got, these are communities, but uh, maybe it's the same thing, I don't know. Or maybe it would work to the same end, but yeah, you can um, you can see different uh, different things there and join them. I would just say that if you're in a group and it's not working for you, there's 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 more. Um, but when you find that one group that you do fit with, you hold on to them for dear life. Not socially, that scares people, but <laughs> you know. Uh, played by myself for the most part. I feel it's more user friendly, but it's sure not for everyone. Yeah. I like playing alone, and I also like playing with other people, but I like keeping those two things very separate. I feel like the way that I play WoW in groups has nothing to do with the way I play WoW solo. It's like I'm playing two different games, and when I'm playing solo, I'm usually collecting things. Like, sometimes I'm setting myself up, you know, maybe I'll do my Covenant campaign so that I have my Soulbound, Soulbind all progressed, you know, to help me out in raid, but for the most part, I'm doing stuff like this. <laughs> I am... I am banging my head against a wall in some old dungeon that nobody goes to anymore, trying to get some, like, a mount or a pet or something. And then maybe I'll, like, ride that mount to the raid. Not so much in the raid. There's not very many places in Nathra you can mount up, um, if any. But, but, uh, but yeah, I like both of them, and I wouldn't trade either one of them. I don't know what I would do if I had to choose between um, playing WoW only ever with people or only ever alone, because they're both very important to me. I suppose I would keep the people and then just not play alone and then try to fill that void with other games, but I really like Solo WoW. And you could write a letter to WoW asking where the mount is and if it exists. I've been whining about Torgas being balanced wrong for weeks now. Turns out, according to the interview with Ian, I was right. Uh, WoW is a solo game, it's just a glorified Banjo-Kazooie. I've heard a lot about Banjo-Kazooie because people say that my intro music sounds like Banjo-Kazooie, but I've never played it and I don't know at anything about the game. Is it actually like single player WoW? Uh, where do you get the sweatshirt? This used to be in the Blizzard gear store. I don't think they carry them anymore. I've had it for a few years. Have you done much PvP this X-Pack yet? None, none. 
Oh, I'm awful. I am leveling. I just started leveling my PvP character because I like to do it on separate characters. Um, I'm not about to start PvPing my priest, so I started leveling my druid. But she's like level 51 and I've uh, I started playing Animal Crossing again, which does not bode well. Although maybe maybe today will have given me a taste for <laughs> I don't know, fame. And I'll want to I'll want to go really hard to to really I mean I don't think I can be a dreadful gladiator hazel. <laughs> that was really funny, but you know, be some kind of a gladiator. Stick figure merch is expected to arrive on Monday. Very nice. It's the real end game is farming random mounts. It's a platforming game. You do things to collect other things. I see. I will never play it because it's for platforming. <laughs> or because it involves platforming. I am... I am I like to think that I am a fairly zen gamer. Things... I don't take things too personally, for the most part. I rarely... Not never, but rarely get upset about a game. But platformers just tilt me off the earth, man. I, I, oh, I don't know why it was, I thought it was a good idea for me to get Fall Guys. <laughs> it's funny because they're all cute and then when they fall they go, Nier! but like, I fall a lot. And you know what playing Fall Guys feels to me is it feels like you're in school and everybody's doing something like a race or something like that. And you can see everybody finishing and it's getting more and more embarrassing that you're still like 10 yards from the, from the beginning. Right? Like you just fell down and everybody's watching you and they know <laughs> how horrible you're doing. And then the longer it goes on, the more other people finally get their lives together and actually finish it. And the more obvious it is what an absolute tragedy of a gamer you are. Uh, a platformer game is a game where the primary gameplay involves jumping to various platforms. And the main failure condition is falling off of one to your death by missing a jump or just running. Um, often there will be other obstacles and mechanics involved, but Mario is an example of a classic platformer where you are trying to reach the end of a level um, by jumping and jumping and falling. Uh, how do I find out what I want to main? I can't keep swapping. At a certain point, you just gotta pick. You just gotta pick, even if it's arbitrary, even if you can't come up, like, you, you've made your pros and cons lists, you've pulled out the three ring binder, you've sharpened your pencils, you've slept on it, you have tossed coins, and you have, uh, you know, color-coded your archives, like you have thought about it as much as you're ever going to think about it, and you still can't pick, just take your best your best options and roll a dice, and then, st and then make yourself stick with it. There is a level of joy that you will never, ever, ever, ever get if you're always wondering if there's something better on the other side. Um, you just have to, you just have to commit. They're all good, they're all fine, they all work. You will never have, there's no class, maybe spec, but there's no class in this game that you can play that's a mistake. They're just different. So you just got to think about the things that you like, pick one that has a lot of the things that you like, and then stop thinking about it, which is easier than said than done. Um, I switched mains chronically for the first like five years or so that I played this game. I started playing in Wrath and I did not pick a main until WAD basically, like end of mop WAD. But then I was a priest and I've been a priest ever since. Mm. What size is the Azeroth crew neck? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, hang on. You should take your glasses off before you put crew necks on and off. I never remember that. I haven't been wearing glasses long enough in my life. Okay, all right. Okay. This could be the run. This is Hazeltron <laughs> with her favorite pets. Have you seen Rex Troy's new video, Demon Hunter Night Payability? No, I'm sure it's phenomenal though. Um, never, never at a loss of ideas, that one. Banjo is a semi-platformer compared to Mario. Jumping an actual platforming, more a straight, fun collection adventure. You can switch mains by expansion. It's so much more account bound now. Yeah, and I did switch characters. Um, I switched characters at the beginning of Shadowlands. I was maining a gnome. 
Shadow Priest, and I am now a human, like a new human that I made during BFA just to play in Shadowlands because I wanted to be a human again. And originally I had made my last priest as a human, race changed her to gnome, but I didn't want to race change her back because I was in love with her as a gnome, I just didn't want to be a gnome anymore. I didn't want to be a gnome no more. <laughs> I don't know why people show up to this. And then, um, so I made a new human. Also, um, my old main's name was Hazel, spelled H-A-E-Z-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. Like, it just had so many extra letters that people would look at it and just have an aneurysm. i never get over itchy and N-U-T-Z. Made a hunter since 2004 because to this day I've got the mental capacity of an 11-year-old. I, I don't think hunters are necessarily as brain dead as people meme on them. Like, they have a nice low skill floor in that if you want something that you don't have to think about too much, they're good for that. But I've also seen some very good hunters in my day. Okay, this is attempt number 417. Why am I already sad? I'm sad in advance. Sticks. <laughs> Learn the sadness. <laughs> I've been conditioned. I just see the room and I'm just like, oh, <laughs> not again. <laughs> mm, all right. So that was, what was that? 17, 18, 19, 20. 18. Uh, this lady hits people with a fish. That's the uh, stink rot smasher mace from Island Expeditions, if anybody's wondering. It has the best physics that I've ever seen in my entire life. Uh, you look like I felt at the end of Siege for years. I will take this over the Siege run. I was in Siege for half a year, and that was too long, and I wasn't even unlucky yet because I was only doing one stream a week on it. I would do two characters a week because they took me an hour each. At least this run I can do in like 10 minutes. Uh, no, you don't scream every time that you don't load them. Uh, I did win, I did win the pet battle. I got, I got lucky. <sighs> Wonder if you would even feel happy? Well, I feel like I owe it to you guys to at least look happy. I don't like to act because I can't. I'm awful. I'm an awful actress. But you guys have been watching this for so long now that I owe you a reaction. How disappointing would it be if I was just like, wow, look at that. You know, so I, I, I don't think there's any way for me to have an organic reaction because now there's just too much expectation built up around this thing. Mm. What about a demon hunter called Hazel? What if someone just thought that it was like a Hazel hater though? <laughs> what if it was just somebody that just really didn't, like they were very committed to not liking me? I sent my main through Kara to get the mount for the very first time ever and I got nothing at all. I give up. Fish physics. Mm. Best of evenings, chat and Hazel. You better never use another mount. It's a shame it doesn't fly. We have a lot of horses that can fly now. It would be cool if that one flew. But um, right now, of course, in Shadowlands, we can't fly yet. So I'm getting some, I'm getting some real time to use my, <laughs> my ground, my ground mounts. That's something. <sighs> Used to invite friends when I got to Garrosh, just in case the mount drops. Why are your drinks bottomless? This is a very big mug. I am almost done with it, but I do go through a prodigious amount of tea just on, in my life in general. There we go. And then, uh, and then you just <laughs> hit it with the water. This bad boy holds 40 ounces of water, um, which delights me every time I remember. And I still have to fill it not twice a day, but at least once a day. I go through that thing at least once a day. Um, more if I'm, I find that I drink a lot of water when I'm procrastinating. If I'm just like stuck at my desk and I like can't get myself to get up or do anything. And I'm just like on Twitter or something dumb. I go through a lot of water. I don't know what that is, but like usually what'll happen is I'll reach the end of my water bottle and then I'll go, oh, hey, I have been stationary. I have been a slug for four hours or whatever it is. And that's the only cue that like takes me out of my my trance is that oh hey I'm out of water I should and then I realized I'm in pain because you're not I don't sit that long good, 
And then I realized I should get up and actually like live my life. <sighs> your soul will leave your body when this drops. I mean, it is a really cool mount. So like I'm farming every mount that I can really just for the sake of it. Um, what determines whether I farm a mount has more to do with the farm than the mount. So I'm, I refuse on the Pandaria world boss mounts because those drop rates are just rude. But the, uh, you know, like we, I farmed Spawn of Horridon and that was, uh, that was just a dire horn. I mean, he's a very lovely dire horn. Don't get me wrong, but I have a lot of dire horns. I have the Warbringer's dire horns. I have the albino dire horn. I don't really reach for my dire horns very much. So it wasn't really top of my list of mounts to actually ride. And that's probably why another one dropped so it could guilt me from my bags. <sighs> but midnight, man. Look at the pretty horsey. It's got like chains. It's got horns. Why does it have horns? Why does my horse have horns? Um, <laughs> is it an oryx? Is it a is it deer? Is it a caribou? Yo, I know we have a uh, moose, but I could use a caribou now. Uh, enjoyed watching the pet battles. Created a tune in that server so I could go hug you, cheer you on. Great job. Did you join mentor chat? I have to say, I really like it to help people there. That's wonderful. I have not joined yet. I um, I don't join, I'm, I'm out of pretty much all chat channels, to be honest with you. The first thing I do when I make a character is I get out of trade, I get out of general, I get out of local defense. Um, sometimes I get out of guild. <laughs> uh, sometimes I'll just tab right out of guild chats as well. And then, um, and then sometimes I will tab out of say and like emotes and stuff as well. So, like I have a window if I'm just like, I wanna play WoW and just see nothing. I have a window that has literally everything filtered out so it's just blank. Like it isn't, nothing will show up and sometimes I play like that too. So um, I can't say, I can't say that I've joined, but it's good. It's a bike horse. It's not your horse yet. That's true actually. That's a fair, that's a fair point. <laughs> it's not my horse yet. These poor ladies, like this poor fight. Everything else I can uh, pass by unscathed, but you do have to clear opera and uh, they really don't deserve it. Just remember you can opt out of chats. Oh yeah, uh, Absol absolutely. <clears throat> I found that my, I, my, my state of mind used to kind of degrade the longer I spent on the internet because um, reading things like comment sections and social media feeds and general chat channels would just kind of stress me out and make me think that everybody was at all times hysterical and also very high in conspiracy theories. And it just made me very sad. And uh, so I, over time, and I'm not always great with this, but I've tried my very best to opt out of of just consuming media from places that can be submitted to by absolutely everybody, like consuming more curated media. So just like finding like a news site here and there that I like the journalism of and then reading those articles and then not looking at comments. Um, because I find that a lot of like the outrage and a lot of the, the hysteria online is all in public spaces and less so the curated spaces. Although they, they get some of it too, but I found that I had a calmer space you know, there's a saying about how you are what you eat. And I think to a similar extent, your your brain will adopt some of what you feed it, even if you don't agree with the things that you're reading. If you're, if you're just consuming a lot of really awful media, just even out of morbid curiosity, eventually the tone of it kind of bleeds into your brain. And, uh, and I didn't want that for myself anymore. On a positive note, you may never get this unlucky again. Maybe, perhaps. Uh, do you farm transmogs too? Or try to make a cool looking set? Mm -hmm. I was trying to get everything for a while. At the end of BFA, I was, I had just like fully and properly discovered the joys of all the things. Um, it had taken me a while to get into it, but when I finally did, I fell pretty hard. And I had decided that I wanted to collect every available appearance that was within my reach anyways, anything that I could reasonably get for my main, so priest wearing stuff. So all the cloth and then like maces and daggers and offhands and uh, and staves, of course, that kind of thing. And I was I was making some progress on it. Um, I haven't been doing that for a while. Once Shadowlands came out, I've shifted my focus to just doing Shadowlands stuff. And then of course, like a little net run here and there, but um, I will eventually get back to that. And then I have a good number of priest sets, but lately I've just been wearing a lot of, um, I mean, I've just been kind of wearing the Mooncloth robe on my, uh, on my priest. It's an old robe, but I think it looks really nice with one of the um, Kyrian Covenant cloaks. So I've been running around with that on. Uh, 
<laughs> Finally able to see a Hazel stream? No way. Love it when people post lengthy rants on Facebook about something and then cite the onion as their source of outrage. Are your weapon enchants not there? Um, oh, like my shaman ones? They're probably not there. I have not a clue what I'm doing um, <laughs> on, on most of these characters. Here, uh, flame tongue. No, that's Earthbind. That's Ancestral Spirit. Uh, wind, wind Fury. I should put those buttons next to each other, right? Eh? <laughs> there we go. Job done. Moon cloth robe is literally Gucci to me. I wouldn't go anywhere without it. Sometimes I mix it up and I'll wear that robe in different colors. Like there's the slightly tealer version of it that you can get. And sometimes I'll wear that one, but with the silver back, the silver accessories from Kiri and stuff, the, the moon cloth just looks so good. Yeah, yeah, Nighthold, I, uh, I concur with what Altrail says. I am kind of hesitant to start farming Legion raids until I can do them on the difficulty that drops everything. So while there is a mount from normal Nighthold I could farm, until I can solo it on Mythic, and I you can like kind of solo most of it on Mythic, but not on like all these undergeared characters, certainly. Um, until I can comfortably solo it on Mythic, I don't really want to start farming it because I don't want to have to farm it and then just do it again, so to speak. Um, I want... Like, if I get the Mythic one, then I can bump it down, but um, the Mythic has a chance to drop both. Attempt number 418. No. It's getting dark in here. I might need to turn up, turn the lights up a little bit. Uh, maybe 419. Or maybe 420. <sighs> Look at my sleepy dog. going to be back very shortly um, and then we'll do 19 and 20 and then maybe that'll be the one I'll be right back He's all sleepy until it's a question of whether or not we're going to go somewhere. <laughs> mm. I'm going to meme the meme, get it on this attempt so that it's before 420. I'll, I'll take it on any number, any number it wants to be, I will, I will fully accept. Um, to be fair, if any character of mine was going to meme the meme, I do adore this one. <laughs> this is, if you've never met him before, this is my Death Knight Hazelich. He's one of my only, not my only, but one of very few male characters that I have. He is a male Drenai. I find them to be the most appealing of the male characters in the male races in WoW, so he's a male Drenai. He wears the Wendigo Woolies outfit that was part of the BlizzCon 2019 virtual ticket reward. And also the Dragon Scale backpack from, 
from Rathian um, in 8.3, the, uh, oh, that thing, <laughs> visions, mementos, PTSD. Uh, let's see. Run 420 with Esteemed Boy. Esteemed Boy was um, an earlier run this week. He's already locked it for this week. Yeah, Boy already ran. <laughs> boy is disappointed to hear this. <sighs> you know, maybe Hazelish just needed a, a memeier name, but... Oh, that's true. Boy, I mean, a Boy is Boy. That's true. Boy is Boy. And then also my um, my Night Elf Warrior is a male character as well. This dude looks like the LSD version of Grumpus. It is Wintervale. It is Wintervale. It doesn't really feel like Wintervale, although I did see, did you guys see the screenshots of Sire Denathrius with his Wintervale hat on? Have you seen it? If not, I have to show you just anyways, just, just in case there's a single one among you that has not seen Wintervale Sire Denathrius. It's the best thing that's actually ever happened. Uh, if you kill him, you get it. All right, so Wowhead. <laughs> Can I zoom in anymore? No. He's got little, he's got, he's got his hat, but then he's got little hats on the tips of his horns. <laughs> Why? <laughs> it's the best, like, I, I'm very happy and I, want to be friends with whoever's done this. It's the best thing I've ever seen. It's so funny. Oh, man. <sighs> the little ones. Yeah, there's three. Uh, you get the hat when he dies. Yeah, the, um, yeah, a lot of bosses will drop green and red Wintervale hats now. Um, I got a green one from Raid last night. I don't know who it, I don't remember which fight it was, but I did get a green one from Raid. Uh, don't think I ever said thank you for the amazing tip about the name calling. I was allowed to snag lol and lols on my server. There you go. First ever holiday season in game. Hop on over to Ironforge, get my present. Well, uh, so there is going to be some stuff for you to do in Ironforge. And if it's your first ever Winter Veil in game, there's going to be lots of stuff for you to collect. So I would go check that out and, uh, do daily, specifically the stolen present daily is going to have some good stuff for you. But there will be the yearly gift. We get one new gift that they make a new one every year. There's a toy typically. And that is that will be handed out on the 25th. So on December the 25th, uh, Christmas Day for uh, Christmas celebrators, there's going to be a new... It, you won't be able to open this year's gift until then. But there's other stuff for you to do. And if it's your first one, there's a lot to catch up on. Um, Winter Vale has a variety of pets and lots and lots of toys, of course. Um, lots of stuff to catch up on. I don't want to kill him now. Uh, what happens in Revendreth after Denathrus' defeat? Probably nothing. Um, I would imagine that... I mean, we still have a sword in Silitha. Sometimes things just don't change. <sighs> Ghost Gaming PC, thank you very much for the two-month resub. Keep talking about the Legion content tuning. I see. We need it. Blizzard keeps ignoring the issue. I don't know that Blizzard watches me. I don't know that they're particularly concerned with what... Uh, with little me and what I say. Um... It's also, yeah, it would be, it would be nice. It would be nice if it got fixed. Cap out of my Renown campaign for the week. Could do a bunch of random stuff. Wonder if we'll see a restored Shadowlands once we end the Anima Drought. Yeah, I mean, we waited. So there was a similar thing in Pandaria. When Mists of Pandaria first launched, the Veil of Eternal Blossoms was lush and very beautiful. And then in one of the later patches, it became blighted by the Shaw. And, uh, and that changed the zone. Like, the, the, pa the patch went in, zone changed, and it was blighted. And it stayed that way until, I think, 8.3 when we went back there for invasions. But then if you were in the invasion version of it, you would then get the, you would then get the, you know, the old god invaded version. So, like, the clean version, I think, it, I think you can still do it if you turned off time walking or the time thing. But um, they don't always get around to those things right away. Smushy, thank you for the two month recent. Hey Hazel, thanks for the fun. Mm. A stream of anima going to the mall in the skybox disappears after defeating Darkbane. Oh, does it? That's really cool. That's that's awesome. Hmm. I really like the Darkvane fight, although it can be very <laughs> I like the Darkvane fight a lot. 
It goes much easier once once people get the idea with the orb threading and that it's not you're not trying to like encase the orbs. You're not trying to stand on the orbs. You're trying to put your beam through them like they're beads. And uh, and once that that news flash gets across, everybody works out better. You know what? Um, you know what I did. Dumb moment from me. They happen now and then. <laughs> Doesn't make me stupid, but I do stupid stuff sometimes. I was doing Zymox last night. Artificer Zymox in Nathria. And I, you may have seen, made some raid guides. So I have made a video explaining how to do the Artificer Zymox fight. In that video, in the phase three section, I animated, personally, by hand, a display showing the ring for the sword attack, the pole getting increasingly stronger, used easing and everything, and then I animated a red ring that spawns in the center, grows to the outer ring, and the attack happens when the red ring has fully grown to the outer ring. I animated this. Somehow, the knowledge that that cast time can be monitored by watching the growing red ring fell out of my brain, and I spent the entire first week being like, why is there no cast bar for the Annihilation cast? How am I supposed to know when this is going to end? And I just blindly guessed and died at least once because I just had no idea how much longer until the sword did the sword attack thing. <laughs> and the second week I looked on the ground and I saw the red ring and then I went, oh no, <laughs> I knew this, I knew this. You can see when the attack's gonna happen by watching the red ring size. It, it gets bigger and then when it's full, it goes off. And it's much easier to do that fight when you know, which I did, I just forgot. I am never, I never cease to be amazed by my own ability to fully understand something and then completely forget it. And sometimes it'll come back when it's relevant and sometimes it's just gone. I don't know how I managed to do that one, but I, I had a full week where I was just like, shouldn't there be a cast bar? How come, where, how am I supposed to know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> it, was, it was something. Uh, however, uh, nobody else pointed out our own guild either. So when I remembered it and I shared it, it was, it was also news to some other people. So it wasn't just me, but I should, if anybody was gonna know, I should have known. Wow. That was something else. Uh, see the right title here? Pet Battle International Champion. I don't want to make people think that I, uh, like, I don't, I don't want to down talk my duel by saying, by downplaying my own abilities because it was a really good match. But I'm really, I'm really, I'm really not representative of the pet PvP community. I, I did my best, but I don't, I'm not a pet PvP regular for sure. Said I count bigwigs. Weak ores help a lot. Negate phase three by placing portals parallel. You just move from one to the other without moving. Mm. The other thing uh, that happened that wasn't like a dumb moment, it was just really funny. Um, I died last night. There were some poorly placed portals. They were awkwardly placed portals and I mistimed, I misjudged my own ability to fight the pole. And I died and I died right on top of the portal. And I'm a holy priest. So when I die, my spirit of redemption pops up and I can keep healing for a while. And my spirit of redemption was just going back and then forth and then back. And then forth, like it was teleporting approximately every like two and a half seconds. There's like a short cooldown that prevents you from going back through a portal when you've just gone through it. But it's a pretty short cooldown. So like every second or every other second or so for the entire duration of my spirit of my spirit healer, I would I was just porting back and forth. It was very funny. Um, it was a it was white for sure. But uh, now I know <laughs> that if you die in the portal, <laughs> yeah. Mm. Uh, thanks for the quick raid guides. Got me through the raid very well today. Thank you for watching them. Same thing happened to me too. I, uh, I, I, I guess I understand the mechanics behind it, but I thought that was, I, I got a good kick out of that. Uh, do you have a favorite spec? I adore Holy Priest. I'm still in my Holy Priest honeymoon phase. I, I mained a Holy Priest for a while when I first started playing the game. And then when I finally picked my main, I took a good long stint as a DPS because we didn't really need healers at the time. And I figured I would try to prove myself because a lot of people were like, oh, well, of course you're a healer, you're a girl. And I was very easily manipulated. So then I went, well, I'll show you. And then I played a DPS even though I didn't really want to. Um, and I did enjoy DPS a lot. Don't get me wrong. I loved being a shadow priest. I was a half decent shadow priest. I wasn't amazing, but for my own gameplay level, I was fine. I was a perfectly fine heroic and not mythic rating shadow priest. But I'm finally back. I am a holy priest now, and I am so 
I'm having so much fun. I'm having fun in dungeons. I'm having fun in raids. I had fun healing dungeons at the end of BFA as well. I am twinkly. I am pretty. I have big heals in emergencies that are really like the uh, serenity is such a satisfying button to press. Um, I got great cooldowns. I can life grip. I know that Holy Priest is not like always the meta. In fact, it's somewhat rarely the meta. Um, and I know there's discipline and I don't care. I don't want to be a disciplined priest. I am a holy priest, and it makes me deeply happy. I've been having so much fun. <laughs> a conveyor belt. Uh, you're more reserved on stream with other people. I mean, there was like a bunch of them, and uh, I was a guest, and I uh, uh, um, am not, f like, a lot of those people had never met me before, so I'm not somebody who is usually super comfortable at, like, leaping into a conversation with people that I don't know very well. I will often lurk for a long time before I get comfortable enough to kind of get the vibe. And even then, if there's like a lot of people, I'm not usually too keen on speaking up unless there are gaps and I feel like I have something to contribute. And they just kept like a good steady stream of broadcast going. <laughs> this is the goofiest transmog. BF keeps saying 420, not sure what's going on, but good luck. There's uh, thank you, thank him for me. There's, so I've been killing this dude over here um, on many different characters over and over and over and over and over again to try to get him to drop a mount for me. And this is going to be attempt like 418, I think. Um, maybe 19, 18 or 19. Um, but many people would prefer for it to drop on attempt 420 uh, because of weed memes. <laughs> Just fine by me. Uh, thanks for your pet battles. One about 750K points betting on you. Oh man. Happy to happy to pull through. My guildies were um, talking about it in Discord, and apparently um, a lot of them bet on me, but they bet on the on the match that we drew, which is kind of a bummer. Uh, this is 419. Phone ready to record just in case it drops. <laughs> but we can also make like a clip. Um, I'm sure. Yeah, this is this will be 419. Atomen, pretty please, pretty please. Well, maybe on attempt 420. Bye, views. Thank you very much for the four month resub. Also, Surly, thank you for the brandy sub. Welcome to the Squirrel Squad. <laughs> Weed memes or weems, if you will. Mm. Drop rate, in theory, uh, last I saw in WoW had 1.4, 1 in 70. So, wow. <laughs> Uh, this character is also kind of, um, awesome. <laughs> if you couldn't tell by his gigantic pink swords and his, like, eggplant man bun, I adore this. Pr also the crop top. Man, my characters are just hot, man. Uh, Parto Tomato, thank you for the brand new sub. Welcome to the Squirrel Squad. Uh, Picalcos, thank you for the brand new sub as well. Thank you very much. 420, let's go. You should have had six already. <laughs> Take my lack of energy. Oh, <sighs> I hope you can get a good night's sleep soon. Unless that's not your problem, in which case I just hope you can anyways, because everybody likes a good night's sleep. Sometimes you get that mythical one where you like awaken in the morning. You don't wake up, you just like awaken and it's like you're powering on as though from not sleep, but like computer hibernation. And all of a sudden you're like, I know exactly what I'm doing. I find that my morning energy levels are directly tied. What did I send myself? I sent myself a pair of BOE level 60 boots for unclear reasons, um, but I can wear them. I guess for transmog? Oh well. Um, I mean, I should put them on. <laughs> and then take them off because those are not the item level I need. Oh, uh, item level 60, not level 60. <sighs> yeah, if I if I have something on my calendar that I'm like really dreading that's not time sensitive, um, I have a difficult time dragging myself out of bed. But if there's something that is either like I have a deadline and I've like actually gotten that deadline into my brain and like lodged behind my eyes, or I've just got something really exciting to do, I will, I'll just be like, up, oh, yeah, socks, pants, sweater, hat, walk the dog, just hop to it. <sighs> I don't know if I've ever had that. It usually happens if I'm, like, the right balance of hydrated and, like, a good night's sleep and then also, like, excited and ready for the day ahead. Not every day works out to be like that. Uh, power on in the morning is more of a blue screen. 
Oh, this morning I knew I had no chance. I, I just, I can't, right now I'm struggling on raid nights because we're just starting our raids again. And normally, my normal schedule, I go to bed, I start getting ready for bed at like 9.30, I go to bed at like 10 o'clock. Oh, because um, I wake up pretty early. And I like to get a full like eight hours, eight and a half hours sleep. And it takes me like a good half hour to get ready for bed. And then an, I like another like half hour to 40 minutes to read before bed. Um, I like to read every day at that time. Um, you know, bedtime stories, but to myself from a book. So I need, a, I need the time, but my raid night ends at 10 p.m. And I'm too fired up to just go to bed. <laughs> I'm too excited after a raid. And then people will be like, oh, you want to do mod dailies? And I'm like, yeah, I want to do mod dailies. Or sometimes people put together a dungeon. Or sometimes I just want to like sit and talk to my husband about how the raid went. And, uh, and, and I'm just, I'm just too fired up to go to bed. Like maybe later on this will all be routine again. But right now I'm just so excited to raid that I get way too, I get way too on. And then I, uh, I can't just like pass out after that. It's like whenever I went to BlizzCon, I got terrible sleep. Not because I didn't schedule properly, but because it was just all too darn adrenaline inducing. It was too exciting. I can't just like go to sleep. I need to be calm. And I have a very hard time getting back down from that kind of excitement. Ever have a really good sleep? Realize it was only three hours or so? Only if it was a nap. But yeah, today I got up at my, with my alarm and took the dog out and everything. And I realized that I had no chance of making it through today with good energy. But I realized that like, I didn't, I wasn't gonna be needed until like noon or so for the pet battle. And I wanted to prepare for it a little bit, but like I had some time. So I was like, oh, I'm just, I'm just gonna go back to bed. I'm gonna set my timer for like an hour and a half. And my sister, um, she says that if you have a nap and it's before noon, it's not a nap. It's just a re-sleep. You're just re-sleeping. <laughs> and somehow that's better. I don't know why. Uh, so I had I had a minor re-sleep this morning, and that was exactly what I needed. When I got up, I I knew exactly what was up, made some coffee, had a good time. Uh, what is your favorite expansion? I I mean Shadowlands now. <laughs> I think I it's maybe just because it's current, uh, and I have strong recency bias. But Shadowlands so far is blowing me away. Although before that, and you guys, especially if any of you are new to my content, you're gonna hate me for this, but I really liked BFA and I really liked Cataclysm. Um, not so much, like, I, I, I think that a player's opinion of an expansion is strongly tied to what they were doing, who they were playing with, where they were in their life at that time, like their relationship with the expansion. And I just happened to have a really, a really amazing time in Kata. I was just the perfect age for that, like, goal. It was also my first full expansion. Like, I started in Wrath, but I was new. And I ta I've told this story many times, but I hated being new at WoW. Being new at WoW can be awful, especially, it's a little better now. Actually, I have no idea. I guess I'm not new now, but it was, um, people were not very keen to help you get up to speed, and they were very judgy about you not being up to speed, and there's so much to get up to speed about. So I, I had no fun until Kata when I finally was, like, on the ground floor with everybody else, and then that was, like, my time. Oh, man. Uh, Shadowlands is my first full expansion. What an expansion to, to start in, though. Yeah, WoW players can be demanding of others. And it, to be fair, in Wrath, there was less content that was geared for beginners. Like, people, if like, I pugged a normal um, Ice Crown Citadel, and people expected me to be better than I was. And I should have been better for that content, but that was as good as I was going to get as a player that new, so I just wasn't good enough, and I got, I got dropped. Um, if there had been LFR, it might have gone better for me because I could have kind of worked my way up through a game mode that would have been a little more forgiving. Although LFR, I will still hold, is way harder than normal. <laughs> Unless you're like going in with a group. But um, but yeah, in, in Wrath, like you could do, you could do dungeons, you could do normals, you could do heroics, and, I, and you could get through with those. But there wasn't really as much content that was like for beginners or at least beginner friendly. Remember stacking int gear in my enhancement, Shami? <laughs> All those are spells, right? My first ever piece of blue loot, I was playing a hunter and I was like level 30 or 40 or so. And the first blue I got, it was from a dungeon and it was a pair of cloth shoulders. They were int. And I put them on and I wouldn't let anybody tell me otherwise because they were blue. And up until that point, I just had like a couple old greens. And uh, I would not let anybody tell me that I shouldn't be wearing int cloth shoulders as a hunter. <laughs> I was so proud of them. Can't imagine how horrific dungeons would be for newbies now. Started in Kato. Oh my gosh, early Kato. 
was so funny. Awful, obviously. Like, for people that are brand new, especially, um, the tuning of Heroic Dungeons in early Kata was so not beginner-friendly. But I get a special kind of joy <laughs> from just watching the world burn. Um, I kind of love, and I know, I know how I talked about not wanting to consume a lot of Hysteria online, but I kind of love watching, um, gamers flip out about not being able to do something, <laughs> you know? Uh, and it's the, 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 the uproar and just, like, people trying so hard and just getting flattened, flattened by mechanics in early Kata Dungeons was so funny. And I died too, like, I was, I was still learning. I think actually Kata Dungeons had a lot to do with me becoming a better player because I knew immediately that I was going to have to smarten up real quick if I wanted any chance of finishing one of these things, in good graces anyways, not getting horribly embarrassed and just like flattened. So I paid a lot more attention to where my character was and what the mechanics actually were and how to avoid them because it was one of those things where if you did them, it was fine, you just had to do them. Um, so I think the early Cata Dungeons, obviously they tuned them later and they, they brought them back down, but they had a lot to do with making me a better player because I realized, oh, I, I need to do better. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, wanted to play WoW. I was scared. People not helping. During Wrath, I found a bunch of knitters I knew had a guild for knitters and their family. Took the plunge and joined. Made learning so much better with them. I really... It would be like a Christmas wish if everybody that wanted to play WoW could find, like, their perfect group of people to play with. Because you don't have to be particular, like, you don't have to be a legendary gamer to enjoy WoW. But you're gonna have a much better time if you can find other people that have similar expectations to you. Um, to play with is the thing. And some people can find that and some people have a hard time. And uh, it makes the game so much better when you have a group of people that you're on the same wavelength with. Watching the world burn. Cat is the perfect X back then, now that you mention it. Fair, absolutely true. Uh, Grim Batol is the one that I had in mind. That first boss in Grim Batol that had that, um, that gaze and then the rush. I, I have very vivid memories of being like, oh, don't move, 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 move. <laughs> you know, just like, don't, don't get hit, don't get hit, don't get hit. Don't, 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 don't you do it. <laughs> You're almost in that, don't get hit. Um, very exciting. <laughs> very nerve wracking, but very exciting. All right, I have Bladestorm up. I can take the trash. I'm a Fury Warrior and I don't know how it works. Um, it's fine. Bladestorm. <laughs> oh, recklessness. Battleship. <laughs> I know how to play priest, and that is all I will ever claim. Not a clue what I'm doing here. This is attempt. This is number 420. I can't wait to loot it too long because it will eventually despawn. Then we got to get the mail. <sighs> if it's going to be 420, this is the one. Where's my mount, chat? Hand it over. <laughs> Give me. Where's my mount? I was promised. I was pinky swear promised. I remember all of your names. <sighs> I can't unblaze it. <sighs> Maybe attempt 421. Good goodness, golly gosh, G. Uh, oh man, <laughs> we lost. Who am I? Could still blaze to help with the disappointment. <sighs> man, oh, I just remembered, and it's a good thing that I forgot before this. Otherwise, you guys would have lost all your points. Um, I have channel points in my channel, have had for a long time, and I've been real stubborn about having them be kind of useless. <laughs> They're just for the default things, like you can highlight messages, you can modify emotes, um, you can put a little Santa hat on the dog one, that's very cute, Altrail was doing that. Netflix and chill, thanks for the three month brace, very much appreciated. But I didn't really let people do anything else, because I was, my favorite version of points was always just having a lot of them and then sometimes gambling. So, uh, I believe I do now have predictions. I haven't used them yet. Um, and if I had done one, some people might have gotten fleeced. Don't say the next magic number is 666. Don't say it. Oh, take it back. Or 690. Uh, Sewell, thank you for the 15-month reset. 
421 for sure. This this thing better not be on attempts. 666. Even at 23 attempts a week. Like, I'm spending two and a half streams a week on this. Out of six. <laughs> I want to play Shadowlands. <laughs> like, I know I can give up, but I can't give up. Uh, Husky's gorgeous. Miss mine so much. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, Joker's a good boy. He is, uh... Nine? I think he's nine. <laughs> he's grooming himself like a cat. I swear he learned to do that after we got the cat. He picked up some cat-like mannerisms. Uh, isn't this content? Yeah, as much as anything else. Mount runs are a, are a decent stream for me because my stream is largely just me chatting <laughs> with you guys. Um, I don't really talk to other people and I'm no great shakes at like incredible feats of gameplay. So the best streams are things that I can do with, um, with like one eye closed, which uh, Mal runs, you know, especially when I've done it 420 times. Wendy M Dev, thank you very much for the bits. Definitely going to be 421. Thanks for the faith, Wendy. Uh, commit to one day of Mount runs and the reset Shadowlands if you wanted to. Oh, the rest Shadowlands. Oh, I see. Yeah, but then it'll go slower. Like I thought. Because for a long time, we would just do Mount Runs on Tuesdays. I would get through nine runs, because I can do nine runs in two hours. I do two-hour streams. I would get through my nine runs, and then I... That would be it. And I figured a week or... It was a couple weeks before Shadowlands came out. I was like, oh man, I really want to get this mount before Shadowlands. Lol. Um, I had better actually pull out all the stops and do all of my characters. So I moved them all out. I changed all their hearthstones, put them all in Dustshire, and then the Horde ones in Stoneard. And I started doing 20, 22, 23. I leveled more characters. Runs a week because at a 1 in 70 chance, surely just a couple weeks of that, you know, you would think you'd be able to just brute force it with raw numbers. And I figured that, yeah, you know, I'll have like one or two weeks of doing three streams a week of this. But, you know, that's what's gonna, that's what it needs. That's what Midnight requires from me for this mount to drop. So who am I to not do it? Uh, Junkyard Jeppy, thank you for the 420 bits. I was gonna cheer as many bits as the attempts you'd have when you finally got them out, but this is clearly not happening soon, and I'm not made of bits, so here's bits for weed memes instead. Thanks, Jeppy. What do you mean, clearly not happening soon? It could happen now! It has just as good of an attempt of happening on attempt 421 is 420. Wendy believes in me. <laughs> 421 was a common year starting on the Saturday of the Julian calendar. At the time, it was known as the year of the consulship of Agricola. Why does that sound like Coca-Cola venturing into agriculture? <laughs> I mean, for obvious reasons, but uh, do it for the consulship of Agricola. I feel like I need to have a better speaking voice for that kind of thing. Hang on. Do your speech warm-ups, although not really. Does anybody have any good tongue twisters that aren't just meant to make me say dirty things? <laughs> Anyone have good tongue twisters that are not meant to get me banned off Twitch? Um, I know that sounds like a challenge, but uh, I, I really enjoy tongue twisters and I've gotten better at them. I'm not amazing. I'm no, there's like a Kazakh newscaster uh, that had like a viral clip go on Reddit or something like that of doing, um, doing foreign language tongue twisters it was pretty incredible uh, diet corn brought to you by your friends at agricola <laughs> peter piper picked a peck of pickled peppers peck of pickled peppers did peter piper pick a peter piper picked a peck of pickled peppers how many pecks of pickled peppers did peter piper pick peas are easy unique new york yeah there was there was you unique unique new york something else and then you know you need unique new york Red leather, yellow leather. Yeah, that's a good one. Red leather, yellow leather. That one falls apart after a few for me. Red leather, yellow leather. Yeah, the the sixth sheep sixth sheep's sick. That one is tough. The bees the bees and the peas are pretty easy. You can do the There was a uh, Betty Botter bought some butter, but she said her batter's bitter if I put it in my butter. Hang on. Betty Botter bought some butter, but she said the batter's bitter if I put it in my batter, it'll make my batter bitter. So it was better Betty Botter bought some better butter for her batter so that her batter wasn't bitter. I don't remember the end of it. I think I tried to make it into like a song and then I could never get the rhyme right at the end of it. You need New York, unique New York. You know you need unique New York. That was it. Uh yeah, how much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Woodchuck would chuck as much wood as a woodchuck could chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood. Uh, many mumbling mice are making merry music in the moonlight. Mighty nice. 
<laughs> vocal warm up that one of my music directors used. So I use um, Harvard test sentences often to warm up my speech so that I can, because they have lots of different sounds in them. And in WoW videos particularly, the word quests and the word healers wrecks me for some reason. I can stare at the word healers and then just like forget how to say it. I don't know why it breaks me so much. It's not that hard to say healers, but like the, I, the, the first vowel just kind of disappears on me sometimes and I go healers. Um, so I have like lists of Harvard test sentences and they're fun because they're like such an emotional roller coaster. Um, I'll do another attempt and I'll show you some of them. Oh, Dungeon Master, that's a good one. I want to see if I can do that in like a good long go, if I can sight rate it. I, I should finish this fight though. To sit in solemn silence in a dull dark dock in a pestilential prison with a lifelong lock awaiting the sensation of a short shot. Short, oh darn it, I, I messed up. To sit in solemn silence in a dull, dark dock in a pestilential prison with a lifelong lock awaiting the sensation of a sharp, sharp shock from a cheap and chippy chopper on the big black block. To sit in solemn silence in a dull, dark dock in a pestilential... Oh, you've, you've repeated it twice. To sit in solemn silence in a dull, dark dock in a pestilential prison with a lifelong lock awaiting the sensation of a sharp, sharp... A sharp, sharp... A short... Darn it, that is hard. A sharp, sharp shock from a cheap and chippy chopper on the big black block. A dull, dark dock, a lifelong lock. A short, sharp shock, a big black block. Apparently, short, sharp shock is very tough for me. <laughs> I'd have to practice that one. Uh, I used to do um, the big black bug and the brown bear, but I would mix up what color the bear was and the, and the blood. Because there was, it's, it sounds like it's going to be a cute one and then it's not cute. You've got the big brown bug, but the big black bear and the big black bear blood blood. The big brown bug, but the big black bear and the big black bear blood blood. Um, and then sometimes it'll be the big black bug, but the big brown bear and the big brown bear blood blood. But none of these do me any good. The problem is um, I, I would do tongue twisters for fun and I would get really warmed up and I'd be like, all right, I'm ready to record something now. And all I really did was enable myself to say things far too quickly, which is not really desirable in a presenter. You want to be able to say things at clearly and at a pace that people can pr not only understand, but process. And then also um, not annoy people by sounding too much like a newscaster or, you know, it's hard to speak naturally and clearly but not too quickly. Uh, there's a reason that like video voice is a thing. Uh, imagine an imaginary menagerie manager imagining managing an imaginary menagerie. Ooh, I like that one. Hang on. Imagine an imaginary menagerie manager imagining a managing a and darn it, I had it better the first time. Imagine an imaginary menagerie manager imagining managing an imaginary menagerie. Oh, that is fun. Uh, side career as a rapper. I don't have any, um, I have reasonable rhythm, but I don't have any confidence. I think you need like a certain level of, for better word, swag that I am sorely lacking. I would be like a weird Al style rapper. Uh, is this Hazel casting a spell? Uh, oh man, Patreon tier to read Dr. Seuss. Talk fast, slow it down in production. The pitch will shift. When you slow something down, the pitch shifts down. And you can, with software, negate that, but then you kind of come out sounding like a robot. It's very tough to slow the speed of something and maintain pitch without having it sound pretty weird. Uh, Kim B. John, thank you for the three month reset. Woohoo! Mana, mana, do, 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 do. Mana, mana. Oh, no, I don't want to get DMCA'd. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do the song. Mm. All right. This will be attempt 421. Uh. <laughs> I know exactly, I know exactly what that's from dances. Uh, milestone celebration someday would be fun. Are you familiar with Watsky? I can't say that I have. Uh, Mozart and Van Gogh were considered weird to celebrate your differences. Frank asks Frank in French if Frank in French is Frank as well. No says Frank in French to Frank. Frank in French is Francois. <laughs> uh... Yeah, I did, I did, uh, I got, I, 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 I hold that I got lucky and I had a couple of misplays. I think he misplayed a few times as well, but I had, I had one really bad one. I used, um, I used, I was blinded and I knew that and I used my only damage ability, which had a cooldown so that I was left with no buttons to press in combat and I didn't want to swap him out. So I had to just sit there on my hands and do nothing for a round. I think I lost that particular one. Uh... The lyrics to I'm the very model of a modern major general. Oh, that's a fun one. Um, is it a song? I didn't know if it was a song. Uh, Irish wristwatch. 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 That one's okay. Uh, as a radio producer who works with a lot of new people coming straight from journo school, crazy how many of them try to shine by speaking fast. It's easier to learn how to talk fast than to slow things down. There should be tongue twisters for talking slow. 
I went through the exact same thing when I was learning to play the trumpet is I thought that speed equaled brilliance. So I would play things very quickly, but not very well. And that's no good. So um, all of many of my drills, like the my warm up drills were just to hold the same note for like a minute. And uh, it was an extra, I mean, it's a good exercise just in pitch control because you want to hold it very steady and clear and beautiful and not have it be really shaky. And it's hard and also an exercise in breath control. Um, and also an exercise in patience because asking me to do one thing for a minute, it's kind of hard. Oh, modern major, oh, it's from a musical. Oh, I thought it was just a tongue twister. Um, what are the lyrics to that one? It's modern, oh, oh, oh no, 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 oh no, I can hear myself. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. Make it stop, make it stop, make it stop. Mute, mute the whole website. Take it all down. <laughs> I, I accidentally clicked off mute on my own Twitch stream and that was unpleasant. Fly to the Bumblebee? Everybody in their, in their life has done Fly to the Bumblebee. It's like, it's, it's like, a, it's not even cool anymore. Yeah, everybody. People learn Bumblebee just to flex and it became one of those things that was like a meme. Uh, Pirates of Penzance. Apparently, yeah, Pirates of Penzance. Uh, lyrics. Oh wow, it's a long one. Goodness, that's long. Oh, I forgot. Hang on, let me see if I can set up a prediction. All right, I'm starting a prediction. It's only for one minute. <laughs> Uh, just to see if I can do it, but it's going to take, I'm, so I'm going to stall for a minute actually as well because, uh, it's up. but I'm a holy pelt and I can do it. Long time no visit. Glad to see you're enjoying Shadowlands. Was it, it was written in 1879. Goodness. Uh, <sighs> yeah, so it's yes or no. Um, yes or no on midnight dropping. Mods can't participate in predictions. Oh no. <laughs> Uh, Flight of the Bumblebee is a song that, it's an instrumental song, you'll hear it a lot in competitions of how fast can this person play. Um, there was like some guy that was saying like he could play the violin the fastest in the world that was doing a pretty <laughs> janky version of Flight of the Bumblebee, but it's... You know, that's, that's it, that's the gist of it. Uh, you cannot fault my current performance, that was as good as you'll ever hear. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Sometimes I hate that the internet's forever. I'm never going to get rid of that now. All right. Uh, no, another another half minute. <laughs> I should have started the prediction earlier on the way down. I think I can set it up so mods can do it. Um, I should be clear. The, the odds aren't good. DMCA. Yeah, that was, that was just a DMCA saver. And that's true. If you can play it slow, you can play it fast, which you clearly couldn't. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Pessimism in the vote. They're just being pragmatic. It's a 1.4% chance. I mean, better than the lottery, but not great. I wanna, don't want to lose my channel points. No betting for me. I mean, if what Ultrail says is true, then you can't. I'm impressed by the optimism. I think that there's 34 people, 34k people that are about to lose. <laughs> if you luck, here, have it. <laughs> Doubters. It's time I'm all in. Yes. The question is, do I run a prediction for every single run? I mean, I guess if I get it this time, then it won't matter. But do I run a prediction for every single run? <laughs> like, what if there's hundreds more of them? I guess it'll really wind down people's channel points. Uh, I'm glad everyone knows about that guy that said he could play it fast but couldn't. For a while I was watching, there was like a YouTube video from a pair of violinists that had like a channel about music memes and it was just like really tickling my band major heart. Okay, I think I can kill it now. Uh, Jimbo499, thanks for the 11 month resub. 5k all in for no, sorry Hazel. <laughs> Actually, that's a fair point. People voting no are probably gonna farm points. Um, just because of the odds on this. But imagine if you win. Shame we can't give odds so that you get more if, like... <laughs> right? Like, isn't that how actual betting works? I don't know much about gambling, but I feel like if you win on the long shot, you should get more from that. Uh, Two-set violin, yeah, that's who it was. I don't watch them anymore, but I went through a phase where I, like, consumed their entire back catalog. All right, attempt number 421. Oh, odds are a thing? Okay. I'll have to learn how to set that up. I'm sorry to everybody who believed in that one. That was not the one. How are they set automatically? How does it know what I'm doing if it's just a yes or a no? 
Yeah, because it's not a 50-50 chance. The, the thing would think it's a 50-50 chance if it thinks that there's all of them are even. Big brain move is to vote no and encourage everyone that this is the one. Mm. I would have to add like a whole bunch of no's and then like one yes. Yeah. Winners get their points back plus the losers points split evenly. Okay. Uh, we got we got time for one more run, and I also want to try to take a stab at this modern major general verse. And be, to be clear, I don't know what the tune is, so I'm not going to try that. Um, here, and that should hopefully get me not DMC. This is long. This is long. Near the dog's paw is um, it's a part of the tripod. It's the the angle handle. Yeah, I don't want to play. I don't. I don't want to play any YouTube videos in the stream. Okay. Wow, it's long. Okay. I am the very model of a modern major general. I've information vegetable, animal, and mineral. I know the kings of England, and I quote the fights historical from Marathon to Waterloo in order categorical. I'm very well acquainted, too, with matters mathematical. I understand equations both the simple and quadratical. About binomial theorem, I'm teeming with a lot of news with many cheerful facts about the square of the hypotenuse. With many cheerful facts about the square of the hypotenuse. With many cheerful facts about the square of the hypotenuse. With many cheerful facts about the square of the hypotenuse. Hypotipotenuse. That's just cheating. I'm very good at integral and differential calculus. I know the scientific names of beings and animalculus. In short, in, an in short, in matters of vegetable, animal, and mineral, I am the very model of a modern major general. In short, in matters of vegetable, animal, and mineral, I am he is the very model of a modern modern major general. I know our mythic history, St. King Arthur's answer caradox. I answer hard acrostics. I have a pretty taste for paradox. I quote in elegaics all the crimes of Heli Heliogabulus. In conics, I can floor peculiarities parallabulus. Parabolus. I can tell undoubted Raphael's from Gera Dows and Zothenes. I know the croaking chorus from the frogs of Aristophanes. Then I can hum a fugue of which I've heard the music's din of four and whistle all the airs from that infernal nonsense pinafore. Then I can write a washing bill and bail on it cuneiform and tell you every detail of Caractacus's, <laughs> Caractacus's uniform. In short, in matters vegetable, animal, and mineral, I am the very model of a modern major general. In fact, when I know what is meant by Marmalon and Ravelin, what I can tell at sight a, a Mauser rifle from a javelin, when such affairs of sorties and surprises I'm more wary at, and when I know precisely what is meant by commissariat. What? When I have learned what progress has been made in modern gunnery, when I know more of tactics than a novice in a nunnery, in short, when I have a smattering of elemental strategy, you'll say a better major general has never sat a gi. For my military knowledge, though I'm plucky, plucky and adventury, has only been brought down to the beginning of the, to, has only been brought down to the beginning of the century. But still, in matters vegetable, animal, and mineral, I am the very moder model of a modern major general. I would need to practice it, but that's fun. That's a long one, but that's fun. I realize that there's a there's a chorus echo in it, so that's gonna, you, that's just silly. I also don't know how to pronounce hypotenuse. I think I guessed. Oh, uh, Mass Effect version, modern scientist Solarian. Yeah, they're for the. I, I I figured there was like an echo when they changed the pronoun when they went from me to he. I figured there was like a second singer in the song that was just singing the impressed version. Hypotenuse was correct. Uh, let's see. All right, one more chance. Maybe we can, maybe we can spoken word this thing to life. Yeah, awesome at tongue twisters. Truly, truly the most impressive skill I have, which is good for very little. <laughs> it's not good for very much. Uh, it'd be better if I was really good at like the stock market or esports would be cool. You know, if I was just like a legendary WoW player, <laughs> that would be fun. I mean, if I was going to pick to be really good at an esport, I don't think I would pick WoW. I think I would pick one that has a bigger prize pool, to be honest with you. You know, take a look at what people are doing over in League. <laughs> take a little look-see at that. But, uh, yeah. Uh, did I miss 420? Yeah, it didn't drop, though. We're and 421 didn't drop either. This will be 422. Missed your true calling of being a freestyle rapper. I just, I just don't have the attitude. I don't have the attitude. I'm too apologetic. Like, I would show up at a rap paddle and immediately apologize for inconveniencing them. Uh, number one esports pet battle champion. Mm hmm. Hearthstone rap or something? Keep it on brand. Uh, other than tongue twisters, where do you like to get your vocal warm up exercises? Oh, yeah. So I do. Um, uh, I mean, just whatever. It's really whatever works for you. The point is to um, warm up your muscles in your face, and then, um, and then your diaphragm is helpful. But especially for just speech, it's mostly about face muscles. So there's stretches, not so much speech, but stretches. 
Um, I won't do them on screen because they're incredibly obscene. But uh, I warm up. I if you look up speech speech warm ups um, and stretches, there is exercises you do with your tongue and with your face. Um, you can do big face and little face. For big face, you open your mouth as wide as you can. You open your eyes as wide as you can. You just make your face as big as you can. And then you hold that for a few seconds. And then little face, you scrunch everything up as much as you can. And what you're trying to do is like get control over the muscles in your face. And then similarly for the tongue, you can do circles with your tongue around the front of your mouth. Um, you can put the tip of your tongue behind the back teeth and then try to push the body of your tongue out forward out of your mouth to stretch it. Don't hurt yourself, but... Um, most of it is just waking up like a lazy tongue and, and mouth muscles because they're not accustomed to moving farther than they have to. And if you want them to be accurate, then you need to toast them up a little bit. Uh, still don't know how to say world. Face yoga. Yeah, it's kind of face yoga. -y. And then, um, the, the enunciation ex exercises I learned just kind of like I used to do when I played the trumpet, there were lots of, um, double and triple tonguing, which I understand sounds obscene. Um, but double, double and triple tonguing exercises where you're going and then you would do that a lot. Like I would do that between class. I would do that in the hallways. I would do that, you know, <laughs> walk into school. Um, you would just, because you're practicing for very rapid fire staccato tonguing on an instrument. And, uh, and similarly for speech, um, I will do patika, 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 and then maninga, 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 maninga. Uh, I think I just saw those in a YouTube video somewhere. I don't think I learned them anywhere, but that's a similar thing. And then for the test sentences, um, I just found a list of these things online, but they're good because they include a lot of different sounds and they also help you test your microphone to make sure that you're not, assuming that you're monitoring, which I'm really lazy about, but, uh, they make, they, if you're going to, um, have any, poofs, like any P sounds, F sounds that are going to um, cause issues with your microphone, they're in the sentences. So let me, I have a whole folder of them. Let me pull some up. Harvard test sentences. Lists. So there's lots of lists. Uh, let's see here. Lots of lists of these things. So I just, I just have them as little images and they tend to be kind of like emotional roller coasters. So I would pull this up and then we would go, we talked of the slideshow in the circus. Use a pencil to write the first draft. Um, this one's not too bad. There's one of them, though, that's just got, like, a real heartbreaking... Uh, you've got the, uh, hop over the fence and plunge in. Sickness kept him home the third week. Uh, and then it's the lazy cow lay in the cool grass. And sometimes I'll try to say them in different, like, intonations. So I'll do, like, happy, angry, um, I'll try to do low and high pitches. Which one am I thinking of that has just, like, a real... A real, um... No. Maybe this one. You've got the Navy attacked the big task force. Uh, you've got the hat brim was wide and too droopy. The lawyer tried to lose his case. Uh, always closed the barn door tight and then he lay prone and hardly moved a limb. That's not the one I was thinking of. There's one where somebody dies. <laughs> the, the point is that a given set of sentences are going to cover many speech sounds. So just trying to say them clearly is helpful. Um... It's, it can be, yeah, plosives, that's the word I was thinking of. <laughs> I wish, um, I wish that my husband couldn't hear me doing them because I know that he's heard it a thousand times before and it probably doesn't mean anything to him anymore, but I'm still, I still get embarrassed. Oh, tell me this is the YouTube VOD for the week. Mm. Could do, could do. Uh, I will not show you big face, little face. I'm sure you can imagine. I don't need the world to know how wide my mouth can open. It's a little scary. <laughs> Mm. But yeah, you can, um, it can help recording to warm up your voice, but I would caution against like over practicing a given script because the trap I fall into is if I have a sentence that I'm just like, that I've said many times in trying to record it, I'll get too good at it and therefore will do it too quickly without making a conscious effort to slow down. And you don't want to go too fast. Um, I tend to speak quickly when I get nervous, which is always, um, especially if I'm recording or talking to people, which are when you're talking. So I, uh, oh, I used to have to make a real effort in sales because I was so nervous. I'm not the right personality to be a salesperson, but I had to try to do it anyways because it was the job that I got. And, um, and I would be trying to explain computers to people and I would, it was so hard, it was so hard, but so important for me to slow down 
because I wasn't trying to impress them. I was trying to help them understand while not feeling talked down to so we could figure out what they needed and pick something that was good for them. But um, I would just be so nervous to even be talking to somebody in the first place, let alone trying to sell them something that I would just go too fast. And then some of my coworkers pulled me aside at the beginning and was like, oh, dude, you got to chill. <laughs> you got to just like take a deep breath or something because nobody can understand you. You sound like a chipmunk. And my feelings were very hurt, but they weren't wrong. Uh, let's see. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog for speech. Mm hmm uh, did you have fun in Asma's stream? Funny to see your relaxed nature mixed in with their high energy. It was a trip. I don't often um, interact with, with that level of that amount of energy. Often, even if I am chatting with people, it's a lot more low key. Um, so that was, it was, it was a lot. It was a little nervous. I was, I was, I kind of had the shakes a little bit. Uh, there's a company that makes AI software for call centers that coaches people analyzing what they're saying. That sounds both very useful and very dystopian. <laughs> Had the same experience as a cashier. Yeah, I, I don't know if I ever did relax. I must have. I had that job for a couple of years. Um, I must have gotten better at some point. But um, I know I still go a bit fast when I'm recording. Because the trick is I can slow down, especially if I'm reading a script. But it's going to sound very like presenter. And it, that makes me cringe a lot. It's very hard. I My greatest dream is to have a very natural conversational tone in my videos, and it's so much harder than it sounds to do that, but also be clear and not too fast. Um, and then sometimes words just get lost. Uh, predictions? Oh yeah, sure, let's do that. Uh, start a prediction. Can I just do it again? Yeah, I can just do it again. Don't show this again. Confirm the outcome within 24 hours. Uh, did the mods confirm it last time or did it just not, did it go? Did we do that? Did I remember to do it? This is, this is new. Uh, any luck with midnight? No. <laughs> There's a script? Sometimes, not very often. My news videos, I do not script. I come up with notes and then I work out how I want the sentence to be on the fly. Um, so sometimes there's lots that I cut out of those, of me just like looking at something and then looking kind of like disturbed and then trying out a couple of sentences to figure out how I want to like segue the whole thing. Um, and then it's a, it's a weird thing to watch on camera, but then like a, a raid guide fully scripted. Anything that has um, closed captioning subtitles, fully scripted. Oh, this is awkward. I didn't, I forgot to wait but it's gonna go to the mailbox. I mean, I'll still go to the mailbox. Oops. So I haven't, uh, I haven't looted it yet. It might despawn and then we might just like go get mail. Oh, can you end submissions early? Oh yeah, yeah, let's do that. See details, maybe I can do it. Oh no, I have no idea. I am so glad that my mods are good because I am useless with Twitch stuff. Drumroll. All right, uh, no dice. It did not go. How would apply terms and conditions? Choose prediction outcome. Winner was no. Okay, I think all trails on it. Okay, whew. Uh, don't do any voice warm ups. Can just flip a mental switch and get right into it 100% of the time. Yep, yeah, how, how are you at tongue twisters? <laughs> this incredibly useful skill that I'm sure will take me very far in life. Oh. My channel points. Is this right that you have challenged Asmongold to a pet battle challenge? Uh, I dueled Asmongold in pet battles earlier today. I was invited on by Rich. Um, so I, I didn't like knock on his door and throw a gauntlet on his living room. Although that would have been very cinematic. But was the only time I'm not happy to win. I had to learn to slow down my talking speed at work. I was HR, had to induct people who didn't have English as a first language. Yeah, sometimes I do get the feedback that it would be helpful for me to slow down more because many people, um, English isn't their first language and some of them are trying to learn English by watching English streams and I do go a bit fast sometimes. I want to at the very least, um, I want to at the very least speak clearly, if not slowly. Downwind pulls bow, thank you for the brand new sub. Welcome to the Squirrel Squad. With streaming though, it's kind of just like a, uh, hope for the best kind of thing. I tend to <laughs> black out a little when I'm streaming. Sometimes things will happen on stream and I won't remember them later. Um, I am finished for the day. I'm going to wrap up my stream, but I'll be back tomorrow 
And I'm doing Torghast tomorrow. I'm gonna try a solo Torghast Holy Priest Layer 8. Long sentence. I'm gonna try to solo 8. It will have been post nerf, but still, um, I could fail. So there's... <laughs> Maybe I'll set up predictions for that. Um, I am fun. I'm glad I have a fun new toy. Thank you all very, very much for joining me today. Uh, thanks for anybody that was supporting me earlier during the duel. It was a lot of fun. There'll be a video of that, um, or at least an edit of that. It was kind of long on my channel sometime when it's done. Um, <laughs> hopefully not too long, but it'll be at least a couple days. Uh, thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day.